Hi, I'm Kath and welcome to the Grist on Narcissism. This channel is about getting into the deeper pathology of narcissism in order to identify useful information to be, better be able to help ourselves protect ourselves from narcissism uh, wherever we may find it, in people, processes, uh, systems even. Today's topic is about why a narcissist won't mind wasting their own time while they're wasting your valuable time. And by that I mean narcissist will narcissistic people will enlist involve enlist themselves and, and other people in involvement where they have no real good in long term or even short term good intentions towards you. They have where they're just really not sincere, not genuine, and really it's really just not real. And you usually only find out later when you have been exploited that they have wasted you know maybe a significant amount of your time and firstly it's important to get a picture of of how this might manifest in different ways and it actually starts with the inability of a narcissist to be able to self-regulate their emotions and their ego and this results in the nar a narcissistic person doing this in inappropriate ways by outsourcing their uh, emotions and outsourcing their their ego by constantly engaging in endeavors, um, social activities, endeavors um, in relationships, multiple multiple affairs, in order to validate their sense of self worth and to boost their status, their ego. And to get this feedback and validation that they need in order to feel special and important and you know this can take this can take the form of even just momentary interactions or short term or even even longer term interactions with people an example is somebody who might go around in their spare time or whenever they're in public or anywhere enlisting people in very complete strangers just say Whenever, whenever they have the opportunity to enlist complete strangers in very involved, in-depth, get-to-know-you sessions where they exchange information uh, uh, with people who they don't even know, maybe just somebody serving them while they're having lunch, or somebody serving them in a in a shop, or and and they get their they get to know that they they start asking the person questions and they they exchange personal information. And this can seem to be very outgoing as well. Uh, it can seem just outgoing and friendly, uh, but it really, and it can be just an outgoing person, but it can also have ill intentions because I know of one person who did this and, and wherever, wherever this person went, they would end up exchanging information with complete strangers to contact them at a later point. And get getting quite involved in, in anyone, even complete strangers standing nearby. And he said to me that he did this because, quote, you never know what somebody might be able to do for you. So it was seemingly for completely self-serving reasons. And that is an example of how narcissists actually do know what they're doing. And it's an example of somebody com of, that they can be compulsively uh, outsourcing their, their regulation of their emotions and their needs. Now, this can also take other forms, such as friendships and relationships where, uh, say, a long, longer term or, or short term, medium, long term friendships, relationships where a person is exploiting the other person for their own benefit to benefit from their personal uh, and emotional support, their labor, their efforts, their time, and uh, in order to regulate their emotions and to to serve their own ends and also in committed spousal relationships where the person is also enlisting somebody in a committed relationship uh, for in, in order to benefit from the person in all of those ways and from the support of the person from the affections of the love and affections of the person maybe financially as well and as a stable base from which to then obtain the well-being and, and forms of sustenance to have the uh, st stability and the stable platform 
to then outsource additional source, uh, additional regulation of their emotions because a narcissist will need to do that because they cannot be satisfied by one person. They, uh, the a level and attention, uh, the level uh, and forms of attention that they need cannot be satisfied by one person alone. Um, and interestingly, Sam Vaknin, professor of psychology, has pointed out in his article, Dissociation and Confabulation in Narcissistic, Narcissistic Disorders, 2020, uh, he points out that narcissists usually do have at least one island of stability in their life. And all other areas of their life are, are uh, dysregulated and uh, destabilized. So they might have a stable job and a career their entire life, and they have, you know, go from relationship to relationship. Or they might have a stable marriage, even the same marriage for their entire life, uh, but go from job to job and burn bridges with friendships and, and associate, other associations. So it, that's why it can be very misleading. A lot of people think, well, they, that person's been married for, for two decades or a decade. So how could they be a narcissist if they say sustained a relationship for a very long time? And, or they've been in a stable job all their life. So how could they, you know, how could they be, and, and they've got a good reputation. So how could they be, have a personality disorder? That's because narcissists do usually need some stable area in their life, which they will maintain to, doesn't necessarily mean they're being good, but it's good enough to, to keep that situation or that area of their life stable because they know it's a stable platform, a stable island that gives them the ability to then be able to outsource from there, successfully outsource in ways that are beneficial to themselves. Say if somebody has a stable job and, and they might use that to fund some other grandiose endeavors, which all are very risky or high risk endeavors and, and investments. And they, they, you know, might be a gambler or something like that, or they might be using their job to fund grandiose short-term relationships where they, um, exploit people in relationships and maybe love bomb and discard people in order to feed their ego and sense of power and importance. You might have even observed or been in the unfortunate position of having experienced how a narcissist will uh, cultivate an, uh, an area of, of stability in their life and then use that to, to cultivate another island of stability, another base of stability, and then blow up the base of stability that got them there. The common theme of this is a, a narcissistic person who is in a spousal relationship, and then they use that relationship as a base for cultivating their status and their sense of importance and their uh, wealth and or their prestige outside of that relationship in another realm. And when they've established that, they then have a new realm of stability that's giving them the power and prestige and the, the wealth that they desire. And then they, this, the stability and the relationship that they had or their marriage, they don't see that as useful to them anymore and then discard that island of stability to then play around and play the field and, you know, and, and now from that point onwards, the other, the new area, which might be a, a, a job or a career that they've established is now their, their new realm of stability and they no longer have a stable relationship. Uh, because narcissistic people, they continually have a desire to enhance their current situation. So nothing is ever enough. And it's basically to, to quell a fear that they're, they're, sense of worth might run out so they can it's just never enough and they will always be looking to enhance their experience and enhance their their position and enhance their sources of of emotional regulation so it's usually always an exploitative from an exploitative perspective and why waste their time and other people's time in involvement that is disingenuous and just exploitative 
Uh, the answer really is in that narcissist, due to their d emotional dysregulation and the negative feelings that they have inside, they are the and the mental energy consumed in outsourcing the regulation of their emotions and egos means that they really don't have the room it, to develop values, a sense of who they are and and what they're really about in some authentic way and I and getting a sense of values that pertain to that to then identify and be drawn to involvement that is compatible and consistent with what their values are because if a person has values and they identify involvement and identify situations people and engaging in things engagement that is actually consistent with values internal values then when they invest themselves in those they invest themselves they invest their values and they invest them in a way that is actually more meaningful because it pertains to their values and that then strengthens the bond that they have with what they're involving and who they're involving themselves with and because narcissists don't have those internal values because they're so consumed with the negative emotions that drive them away from that to outsourcing and it's kind of I guess a band-aid approach that they apply then it distracts them it is very distracting from being able to develop values by which they would actually have genuine bonds with with the involvement and with people that they're involved with so this is one reason why they really don't have a, a functional existential self because what I've just been describing to you here is really a, a sense of existential self and it does function to have bonds and, and stronger bonds that are not as easily broken just for self-serving reasons. And so with that functional existential self, a person is likely to want to achieve gains in life that are also compatible with being genuine and authentic. So, but with narcissists, they will obviously lack that ex existential self. So that is why, and in a way that actually makes it irrelevant. They, they, they just don't see it relevant to not be wasting their time. The idea of wasting their time on other people's just isn't relevant and it just has no relevance in their life. If you can think of an analogy such as somebody who may have had a car accident outside your place of residence or uh, who might got a, have gotten attacked by a dog or something and they might come knocking on their door uh, knocking on your door and they're injured and they're they're pleading for help and assistance and and most people in that situation will do everything they can to provide that assistance in the midst of a compelling emergency like that the idea of somebody's time being wasted or anyone anyone wasting somebody's time would intuitively seem not relevant at all and a person providing assistance might be thinking about other things like keeping themselves safe and and because if they're dealing with a stranger you want you do need to protect yourself even in, in a situation like that and that's a very relevant part of this analogy too because if you think of the life of a narcissistic person as a protracted and diffuse diluted form of this analogy then for the very same reasons a narcissistic person due the, to the compelling nature of their emotional state for for this for very very similar reasons they need to uh, stabilize themselves on an ongoing basis the idea of wasting their time or wasting your time would similarly intuitively not seem relevant to them and if you pointed at anything like that out uh, you know the idea of your time your your effort your trust your goodwill uh, being wasted in your finances potentially too being wasted uh, you know they they will not see that as relevant and they might even be affronted or insulted at the idea that it it should be relevant given their 
uh, self-focus on their emotional and egotistical state uh, of existence. And so you can see too with this analogy comparison that in addition to the idea that they're not going to see wasting theirs or anyone's time as, re as relevant, the adding to that the lack of ability to develop close bonds, which the inability to no room really uh, to be compelled to develop values as being a part of that inability to develop bonds uh, is, is a, a, you know, on a contributing factor as well. And as you can see, none of this and all of this will actually run counter to a narcissist caring about anyone else's feelings as well. So um, unless there's some kind of leverage in place where they might suffer a consequence of some sort for not at least considering somebody's feelings, but once that consequence is removed and there's no leverage, they will, uh, due to all of these things that I've just discussed, they will not be taking up the option likely of caring or considering another person's feelings. Generally speaking, they do know what they're doing and there is no excuse for wasting people's time and not only their time or a significant period of time in their life, wasting their efforts, their energies, and all of a person's good characteristics that could have been used for somebody and something that's genuine because they do have other options. So there is just no excuse. And the thing about people who are narcissists, they then, they then pretend when they have wasted a significant period of your time. And if you call them out on that, they'll, they'll then act like They'll say things like, oh, it's never too late to go and do something else now. Or it's never too late, you know, to go and find, you know, start a new business or a new venture. It's never too late to start to, to get married again or something. And they'll just act as though that that time, that, that your time wasn't worth it, as if that time just had no value at all. And they just do not value their time and your time. Time isn't what they value. The only thing they value is what's compelling to them is the regulation of their emotions in their ego. So it's, um, we might, and I might, must say, I meant to say at the beginning of the video that this applies to males and females as well, equally. And I probably don't have to say that because we can all probably recognize the, both the males and female a narcissist in our lives at some point. So, but the important thing is how can we prevent with all of this knowledge and information, how can we prevent ourselves from having our time and our valuable um, capabilities and characteristics wasted on somebody on something that's not genuine. So, and I guess the hint lies in the fact that narcissists don't have values and that is at, at, at the core of why and their need, just their inability to regulate their own emotions and that that bypasses their values that they are then able to have where they will be able to create bonds. So really it comes down to not just the, the regulation of their emotions, but the inability to form those bonds, those meaningful bonds that through a lack of values or through values, because they have a lack of values, that prevent them from really being genuine. So we can potentially protect ourselves by asking a person if we're becoming involved in someone in any way, just maybe over time or asking them about what their values are or just draw, drawing in some way, trying to draw from the person what their values are, such as loyalty. People will have different values, loyalty, integrity, Dignity, self-respect, honesty, um, discipline, diligence, um, lifelong learning. There's so many values, but the, the, try and identify from the person maybe what their important values are. I mean, it can catch people off guard, but if they can't come up with anything at all, or you tell them what your values are and they trash your values, that is a real serious sign that you're dealing with a narcissistic person. 
But if you can, if they do say what their values are, just observe over time that what they say and do is compatible with those values. And that will give you an idea of whether you're dealing with somebody who might waste, you know, your time and, and waste, you know, important, important, significant part of your life. And uh, so that's one way of potentially identifying and dealing with that and preventing that kind of disingenuous involvement with people. So I hope this video has been of some use for you. If it has, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next video.